Welcome to episode number three, everybody. Uh, in the last episode, I got this going. I put the rosette in and smoothed it all down. So the top right now, uh, what it needs is it needs some braces. And it's not for correcting its teeth. It's a good joke, isn't it? No, I need to put braces on the inside in order to uh, shore up the top so that it is strong. Uh, but the only problem is the first braces that I put in are X braces. They go right across the uh, more or less the center of the guitar and those give the main amount of strength but those need to be put in I'm just setting this down all willy-nilly I'm gonna end up ruining it. Those need to be put in at a 20 on a 28 foot radius dish. Uh, so what I'm going to do in this episode is I'm going to make a 28 foot radius dish. This piece of plywood that I've been using as a little bit of a workstation is actually the right size and I don't have a whole lot of material here to work with for this. What I need to do right now is take the sander and sand all the finish off. This is just reclaimed plywood. It was a TV stand or whatever. Uh, so I'll sand all the finish off on one face on this piece and one face on the other piece that I just cut down. Then I can glue it together and cut it into a circle and make the dish and whatnot. There's a bunch of other, anyway, there's a little whole process to it. Well, here we go. I've got the, uh, that was a lot of dust. I've got the pieces of plywood, both pieces of plywood sanded up and ready to glue together. I just have to clean them up because they're full of dust, like I just showed you, and um, get them ready to glue. Clamp them up and put some glue and glue them together. Then I can start making the jig in order to actually put the radius in this, which you will see soon. I'd explain it, but I don't think it's going to make a whole lot of sense, and you'll see it yourself soon anyway. Don't tell Lara, but I just stole some cabinet doors from her house. Obviously, I'm just kidding. Um, we're doing a few renovations in the house, so I've got these plywood doors that I can use the plywood from for making the, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, saddles, I guess. Basically, the way that I'm going to make the radius discs, they're sitting here drying right now, the glue is, is I'm going to make two pieces that have a, a, the radius in it, um, like two saddles basically, and then the router is going to have a little jig that's going to sit in there, and it'll go in the saddles and make the shape, and the disc will spin underneath of it while it's, while it's going. Sounds a little bit complicated, but it, it shouldn't be too bad. I say that, I've never done it before. Who knows, could be terrible. Anyway, I gotta get some screws off. Well, there we go, this is dry, it's the next day, so I can get rid of all these weights. Ugh. Deep cycle batteries are not light, that's why I use it for a clamp. There we go, so I can use, uh, get rid of all these weights and see how this did. Uh, today I'm going to try to make the template that I can use to make, to actually route this out. I also cleaned up my bench. Mm, seems decent. So, this is a lot bigger than it needs to be. Well, not a lot I suppose. I'll have to find the center of it and then drill a hole right straight through this. Make it as square as possible. Um, hole that I can use on a jig that I'm gonna have to make to go on the table saw in order to cut it into a circle. Uh, 
Okay, here we go. So I've got this block that I made when I was making the rosette. Uh, so I drilled a square hole on this so I can use this to actually square, squarely drill holes into things. It might not be 100% accurate to do it this way, but for what this is, it's not going to matter too much. This isn't highly, highly precise work, what I'm doing right now. I've got these lines to line up with the hole, with the, the lines here. Since it's not quite square, because this is a rectangle, the lines are not quite lining up, but I'm doing the best I can to average it all out. And then I can actually see the middle there. It doesn't really matter because this, wherever I drill this, if I'm off a little bit, it'll end up making that the new center. And then when I spin it, it'll be, it'll be centered from there. Did yeah, that go the whole way through? It did. Cool. Yeah, I'm a little bit off, but that doesn't matter. It's close enough for what it is. So basically how this jig is going to work is I have the table saw's blade right here. And what I'm looking to make is I can make a 22 inch disc on, on that piece of plywood there that I made. So I'm gonna have my bar that I'm using, that I used for the rosette, which is the same size hole that I drilled on that piece of plywood. I'm gonna have this bar here 11 inches away. That way it's the, the radius of the actual disc. Um, and I have a little piece of wood here that I'm going to fasten to this here. I'll screw it from underneath or whatever. And then I can pass this back and forth this way in order to cut corners, cut corners, cut the corners, cut the corners, and keep doing that until I get it the whole way um, around that it's a circle. Then, then I'll have my circle to work with. Here we go, look at the jig. So I'll put the pin in here, into the plywood, and then I can put the jig on that pin. Flip it over, put it in the slot, and it should be ready to go. I'll have to adjust the height of the blade, obviously. But this is basically how it would work. I'll lower the blade and show you. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to hold this quite stiff and then run it through. Oh boy. Might be a problem. Well, slight change of plans. This jig just wasn't big enough when it slid off the table saw. It would slide off the table saw and drop down and before I cut the whole way through, so that didn't work. But I can do the same thing, just use something bigger. So I'm going to put this piece here on this door that I'm gonna use for the, for the other jig, just as a temporary jig for this. And yeah, that should work good. There we go. There's a circle. Uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. Actually, that worked really well. Now I've got a little little bit that I didn't quite go far enough here, but I'm gonna see how big it is. And yeah, it's not that big of a deal to have those there. 22 inches ex exactly. Wow, it's kind of surprising actually. I kind of figured it'd be a little bit off. Uh, 
Anyway, I'll pull out this little pin. So yeah, that, that jig worked really well, actually, to make the circle. I'm kind of surprised how well it worked. Uh, when I'm actually routing out the uh, other side, this is the side that's, well, I suppose this, they both have a hole. Anyway, this is the side that I'm going to, going to dish out. So when I'm actually routing it out, I'll be able to use this pin to sit in here to make the whole thing spin and it'll go all crazy and you'll see. Just, just wait and see, it's gonna be fun. Cool, I need to make some pieces that have the radius on them now. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult than doing this. One cool thing about this jig here, as opposed to um, doing it some other ways, I can make different holes in different places to make different sized discs. So if I needed to make a larger disc, I still have room on this that I could use it. That said, I'm gonna be probably cutting apart this piece of plywood here, so we'll see. A wire stretched all the way across my messy garage to the trunk of my car. I had to move a lot of stuff out of the way to be able to do that. And that is 28 foot long. So here's the end of the wire. I've got a little loop in it that I can put the tip of my pencil in. And if I pull it tight, then I should be able to draw a 28 foot radius. I'm gonna make a few lines and kind of average it out when I'm actually cutting it. That should be good. That should be right. But boy, it's kind of a, not that good of a setup to do that. Uh, we'll see, anyway, that should be good. That should be 28 foot. Well, there we have it. I cut this piece here off uh, at a 28 degree, 28 degree, 28 foot radius. Uh, so I cut it off on a bandsaw, got a haircut, you know. Uh, and uh, yeah, now I gotta sand the edge to make it the right size for doing the stuff and then I'll copy it with the router and I'll be able to make my dish. I'm borrowing this here oscillating sander, oscillating drum sander, so this is uh, just a nice little, little rig in order to be able to sand edges of things on a curve and yeah, works, works pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'll get it started and you'll see how it goes. There we go, so that's not perfect yet. I have it getting, it's pretty close, uh, close to the line. What I'm going to do now basically is just take a block and sand it by hand the rest of the way. Um, using a block, as long as I have something that's got a slight curve to it, will actually help to even this out quite a lot. Uh, right now it's quite bumpy. So I can go with where, where the high parts are, like the high part right here, I can go with that and sand that down a little bit extra if I have to, but using a block will help to average it out. And then having more than one piece sitting on the jig at a time too for the router's little sled. I don't know what, I, what else you'd call it, but for the little router sled, will also help it to be more even. Well, there we have it. I have my uh, template for the radius and I need to copy this. So I'm gonna go to my photocopier and I'm going to stick it in that. And, oh, well, that's not how this works. Darn. Wish you would have thought of that earlier. I guess I'll have to use a router and copy it with that. I just did all this work cutting this thing in half. I mean, the cutting it wasn't the work, but did all this nice videoing, of getting ready, getting the helmet on and taking whatever, getting everything set up, turning it on and all this stuff. I had a whole big plan for how I was gonna video this to make it look good. Then when I went to actually cut the piece, I missed the button on my camera and I didn't record it. So here it is, cut in half. Uh, interesting, you can actually see the radius now in the last clip of, uh, that you guys are gonna see. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you could actually see the radius just because of how fine of a radi radius it is. It's not much, it's 28 foot. It's not 28 inches or something, something that you'd actually see relatively easy. Uh, so it's 
just kind of funny is it's hard to see, just interesting. Um, I'm going to take these two pieces here, this one has the radius in it, and I'm going to line up the straight edges on the back side, screw them together, and use my pattern following bit to follow the pattern to copy it to the other piece. I guess all that footage that I get you guys all hyped up about is not going to be totally useless. So I uh, didn't quite line up the back perfectly, but it's not going to matter for what it is because I'm going to take it to the table saw, use this as a straight edge to follow to cut the back side. It'll be perfectly fine. That's going to work just fine. So roll the footage. Might have had a little bit too much hype on that footage. It wasn't all that good. Let's see if I can follow a pattern. Who don't know, I figure most of you probably do, a pattern following bit just has a bearing right here that's the same diameter as the, uh, the, the cutter. So when this is resting on my template, this part here will be able to cut the other, the other part there. It's all just on my router on a little sort of makeshift router table. <laughs> My real rider table is in my basement, and that's, it's quite heavy. I don't really feel like hauling it out right now, and I don't want to use it in my basement, so this is what I got for now. Make quite the mess. I am going to mark these with which, which ways the same side, that way I make sure I put it together right, just in case they're not quite the same from one side to the other, which they're probably not. A, A, there we go. They're probably not quite the same from one side to the other. That way, at least the whole thing will be even and it won't be, I don't know what it would do. I don't know. So here's the disc. This is what I'm thinking. I made these on purpose longer than the disc is wide so that I can cut out a notch for the disc to fit in. There'll still be plenty of room here for this not to, not to warp. It's, it's a hardwood plywood, hardwood the whole way through. So it should be more than strong enough. If it's not, I'm gonna be really frustrated with myself for cutting it. Look at that. That's gonna be great. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, I pushed it in by hand. Look at that. Wow. And that, my friends, is how you make a go-kart. Look at this. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, man. All right, I got the bars. Oh, I'm excited. So these are gonna fit in here, just like so. They'll be able to run on there. I think I need to adjust the height. Yes. Yes! All right, so here goes nothing. Well, there you have it. That's a dish. Oh, bars fell right out. That was so cool. I mean, I don't know if you guys think it's cool or not, but I thought that was pretty sweet. 
I'm not trying to brag. I'm not, that, that's not what I mean. I don't mean that I'm some great whatever and all that, but that was, that was cool. I liked that a lot. That was actually a lot more difficult than it seemed. Um, it would spin too fast. I was expecting to have to try to keep it going. Once I got to the middle, I had to keep it going, but on the outside, man, it was spinning fast. I was trying to use my leg as a brake to stop it, my, my hip. So then I thought I'm gonna ruin my shirt and my pants. And I, I didn't realize, but I actually almost chewed through my cord. Um, my cord was, was down there. I don't see any copper, so it's fine. I'll have to tape this up and keep an eye on it. But I almost chewed through the power